Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, good morning, good day, good whatever it is. When you're watching this video, welcome to another Road Reflection. Uh, we only have one topic to cover today, and I think this probably will wind up being a, a shorter shorter Road Reflection than, um, than some of the others, but that's okay. A uh, couple of points of uh, some things I have to address. Uh, some some of you might have seen my earlier social media post about no show on Friday. Uh, normally, I would do three shows in a month, and uh, and right now I am I am not doing uh, the first show of October. I postponed it. I haven't canceled it. I postponed it. Um, I'm moving it to Saturday, November seventh. Um, I'll still be doing a show on the 6th, but uh, I'll be doing an additional show that uh, that weekend. And the reason for that is uh, we have a cat. His name is Milo. And Milo has gone through some surgery on his eyeball, making him a pirate kitty. And so when I'm at home, I kind of have to, you know, keep an eye on him. Um, and I think he feels a little bit more comfortable when, when we're around, uh, my girlfriend and I are around, you know, she's, she, I, I usually head out for the side gig that I have around four and she gets home around 540. So it's, you know, it's, it's about an hour and a half window that we're like, Ooh, fingers crossed, you know, hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll be all right for that time being, um, but, uh, you know, it, it is it is a lot of work to make sure that he is eating properly and resting and not trying to, like, you know, run and jump up on things. Uh, although he has done that. He has done that. And, uh, yeah, like last night, he, you know, I made a little cave for him out of this box because um, one of our housemates was like, oh, they like being, you know, in a cave type situation um, when they're, when they're injured or not feeling well or something. So I made a little box for him, put a little towel down, put some catnip on it, uh, just to like get him settled in. And, and, you know, uh, my girlfriend moved in some, uh, his food and water and all that stuff. Uh, and last night he's, he was like underneath our roommate's bed for a little while. And then when we heard him, like, we're like, Oh shit, Milo's up. And, you know, kind of, running around <laughs> our roommate through we came and got him and put him in the cave and he was very happy to be there and and then at like six in the morning he had somehow he'd started scratching and I could hear him scratching and my girlfriend was like just it's gonna be fine like just go to bed uh and basically he was scratching on my chair to see if he could jump up onto it um and because like normally he'll come and sit on my lap sometimes when I do work and he uh, he went up and he like jumped up on my table, wound up like sitting on top of this box of peanuts and slipping off of it, kicking it, panicking and diving over to our bed. Like he still got the acrobatics and that like exploratory curiosity. It just comes at these weird times, but you got to keep an eye on him because he is a very like clever, curious little cat. And, uh, yeah, and I've, I've found myself pretty, pretty attached to him, uh, in, in the short amount of times that I've gotten to know him. Uh, and, and like, I mean, I hang out with him ever all day, you know, and I, and he's, he's a weird, he's a weird little dude. Uh, so just making sure like he's eating and not putting himself in too much trouble because he hates his cone. That's a thing too. Um, I never thought it'd be like, remotely anywhere close to being a cat person like didn't think that would be a thing um but you know here we are and the last couple nights have been the nights before like he's been very cuddly and wanting to sleep on our bed and stuff and that's normally not like a thing that he does he kind of just uh he will sometimes sleep at the foot of our bed uh or like find a little spot like his his spot right now has oddly been like right by my table is where he has like right by my desk is where he's been sleeping which is very cute and uh or he'll go and sleep downstairs or something but now he can't because he's got a cone 
Uh, you know, like he has to recover. He's groggy on painkillers all day, and uh, but he still finds a way to like get in trouble. Like today, he was like bouncing around the bed because he just he thought there was something there, and I was I had to like go calm him down. So anyway, the point of all this is uh, I'm, ta- I'm I got to take care of the cat, and that means that the amount of energy I I, I would not be able to give. Um, you know, the amount of energy that, that I need to give him to make sure he's okay, uh, as well as the amount of energy it takes to, like, write a brand new show every single week. So, um, taking the week off, postponing the show, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's what's, uh, that's what's gonna happen. So, like I said, talking about the uh, one thing that, uh, you know, that, that I, uh, Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about this subject. And that subject is that, you know, Trump has COVID. Uh, after the shit show of the debates. Um, I think we were like... This might have been Friday. And that's when that's when Milo got had his, his surgery done and everything. And so we're like just laying in bed. And he like, you know, Milo's like cuddled up to us. My girlfriend just goes, holy shit, Trump has COVID. And at first I was like, no, he doesn't. Like, I was just like, that's not, that can't be a thing. That's too crazy. And she was like, no, he's seriously, like, he's got COVID. Like, they tested positive. He sent a tweet out and shit. I don't know if he's tweeting or not. Because here's the thing is, like, I don't pay that much attention to his tweets. They're, I mean, fucking liberals, that's all they've done for four years. Is they've, like... They've, they've forgotten that anything else exists, like any other, for, like everything that is prevalent comes from his tweeting. And it's like, you know, that's not how legislation works, right? Like that's not how people get shit done. Just because he tweeted some shit doesn't mean that it's it's like a real thing that we all need to give weight to. But, you know, this brings up a couple questions. And I, and I had somebody ask me this question on um, uh, on an interview I, I recently did. Where they asked me, like, is this something that you're going to make fun of? Is this something that you're going to write jokes about? Um, and I haven't. I really haven't. Like, the only thing that I said that was jokey was, you know, can we say that tweeting increases the uh, chances that you get COVID so we can have two weeks of peace? And, you know, that, that's, just, that's about as much as I can say. I, I don't particularly have anything, like, awesome to say about this situation. Like, it's bananas that he, like, makes fun of Joe Biden wearing the biggest mask. He's wearing the largest mask I've ever seen everywhere he goes. It's just a mask on his face. It's covering up his whole body. And it's like, are you talking about clothes? Uh, but, and then he gets COVID. And, you know, like, who knows who the fuck he got it from? At this point, it's almost impossible because he's holding these huge fucking rallies and I'm sure he's, like, meeting a bunch of people. Well, they say he, he got it from Hope Hicks, but who knows she, who she got it from? And, and, you know, he's holding these large rallies and shit. Now he's probably infected a bunch of people, which means that, like, wave two is, again, going to be exacerbated by fucking Trump. Like, it's about to get real bad. So, what does this mean, right? So, for for the next 14 days, he's incapacitated. He can't go anywhere. There was a report that came out on uh, Saturday, uh, in, uh, you know, saying that, like, he's not looking good. And the next two days is, is what's really going to determine whether he gets through this or not. And he's 74 overweight, he doesn't eat well, he doesn't look well, uh, he's not a healthy person by any means, uh, uh, so, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at someone that is, um, there's, it's just not, this is bad, this is really fucking bad, so, you know, I, I, I saw somewhere today that they've released him, which, if that is the case, um, that's insane. 
he should be he should be at a hospital being monitored for the next two weeks. Um, because this thing doesn't just you know it's it's not like you get diagnosed and in three days you're like we're good. Usually it, it takes a little while for it to like set in and figure like he's not well and he shouldn't be out milling about and going to meetings and doing this that and the third like that's fucking nuts so you know why would they release him I don't know I don't know medically speaking that is uh, that is a crazy thing to do and realistically too so like if they do release him right they let, let let's let's say they, they released him for because he he seems medically sound well it's not like he's doing well like where's he gonna go is he just gonna fucking be in the white house quarantined you know like what the fuck is gonna happen he can't he can't like lead the country how much ever machismo bravado fucking rah rah chest thumpy he wants to get like he can't do that. He has a fatal disease. So what happens? Like, is the, so I guess I mean Pence. Pence is probably kind of in charge of things now, for at least the next two weeks, if that. If it, it might be more than that. And really, like, these these are the people that we should be concerned about, right? All these liberals that are sitting there and, like, every... I literally had somebody go, don't you pay attention to his Twitter? It's like, no. He says so many crazy things on Twitter. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking know. But he's a symptom. And he's just, like, he's the loudest symptom. This is literally like you're paying you 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 have cancer and you're like, but I got this boil I got to take care of. It's like, yep, it's a big boil right at the tip of your nose, and I know it's like it's fucking there and it's annoying, and but it's like, hey, you might want to do something about this cancer though. Yeah, but once the boil's gone, the cancer will just take care of itself. No, you fucking won't. These, these people like like Pence and Ted Cruz, Mitch McConnell, like these are the real bad guys. These are the real fucking psychopaths. These are the people we need to start being more concerned about. So, you know, if Pence is going to get put in charge for till the election rolls around... And I wouldn't be surprised. Let's say he survives this, and I don't know if he is or not. And I'm not. I'm not saying, you know, it, it's it's nuts. Like I'm not gonna sit there and be like, I hope he does. Like that's crazy to me. Like fuck. It's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to ignore the irony of the situation. It really is. Like, it is, it is a major... It, again, it becomes a loss of life situation. I'm not saying that you should... Uh, like, I don't have anything nice to say about it. So I'm just not going to fucking say anything about it. In terms of, like, am I going to make fun of him for, for getting it or not? But I am going to... I do know that there's some consequences coming down the pipeline. Like, what is going to happen with this election? Let's say he doesn't make it. So then you have Pence going up against Joe Biden and you know that might that might help Joe Biden look a little bit better but you know he is not going to be able to get the evangelical base um, I think more staunch Republican voters like Pence um, but Pence is a politician so going up with those debates Joe Biden might actually be able to do okay but even then we saw him at the Democratic debates where a lot of, again, was it like going up against someone like Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren or even Kirsten Gillibrand, like 
he wasn't really able to hold his own. Which, again, is just like, why the fuck did the Democrats pick this dude? It's fucking insane. So, you know, in a Pence versus Biden situation, I don't know what's going to happen. Still, neither of the candidates are somebody that I want to vote for. And at the end of the... Well, so here, I'll make this statement now about voting is... Uh, I think everybody should be voting for for who they feel like is the right thing to do. Everybody has their reasons. And then going forward, we don't stop the fight because Joe Biden won. Uh, Joe Biden is a uh, part of the system. He's a part of the problem. He's historically part of the reason why we are in the in the state that we're in. So Joe Biden comes in, good boy Democrats, you know, squishy liberals uh, should still be fighting. If you if you are if you are engaging in protests, you should still be engaging in protests. If you are donating to grassroots community based um, institutions, then you should be donating to grassroots community based institutions. If you're supporting independent uh, journalists, finally, then you should continue to support independent journalists. If it's gotten you to pay attention to more progressive issues, you should continue to push for those progressive issues. Crypto fascism is still fascism. But that's what will happen, right? Um, if it becomes a Pence Biden situation, then we're looking at, uh, at crypto fascism versus theocratic fascism, um, which, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're categorizing fascism when really what we should be doing is be against fascism. All kinds of it. We, and, and making excuses for, well, this kind of fascism is really worse than this other kind of fascism. So we'll incrementally get out of fascism by voting for this specific one kind of fascism. Like, that's insanity. You're still voting for fascism. Now, let's say he survives the next two weeks. And I don't know if he will, right? Like, again, they're talking about him getting released today. Uh, what, what is today? Monday, October 5th is when they said that they're going to get released. He got he got uh, the diagnosis on Friday the 3rd, or Friday the 2nd, sorry, which means that he technically shouldn't be out and about doing anything and under, like, special care because he's an elderly gentleman. Till the 17th, at most. At least, sorry. Maybe even longer. By the end of the week, what I will say is, based, based on what we know about this virus and how it affects the elderly, uh, by the end of the week, I think he's probably going to be in worse shape than... Than, uh, than they're going to say that he is. And, and the reality is, that I bet he is in worse shape than they're saying that he's in. Um, and, and the reason why they are, you know, like they're doing the same thing that he did with the whole virus. It's just like, well, I don't want people to freak out. Don't tell them I'm doing real bad because then the country will go into chaos. And it's like the country's already in chaos, my dude. You are not the sole person responsible for the chaos, but you sure as shit perpetuated a lot of it. You're, you know, you're, you're fucking stand by and stand down fucking verd vomity bullshit. But let's say he survives. I would say... On October 18th or October 19th, uh, he is going to get a big bump because his fucking base is going to go nuts. And they're not going to believe that he is... Like, he survived because of the medical care that he received. And everybody should be receiving the same level of medical care. 
Now, I know he did say that if you have, if you get COVID, just go to the hospital and, and you know, the government will, will cover it. They're not going to put anybody in medical debt. Uh, well, I hope that you do the same thing for, for, for companies like Gilead who have Rendezivir and they're charging three grand for it. And I hope that you wouldn't, you, you don't ignore the, uh, the cocktail that is infinitely cheaper and more effective than Remdesivir. The fucking Lord of the Rings truck, apparently. But here's the deal. If he gets out of this, I think that's... I don't think Joe is... How are you going to spin it? Biden could barely keep up with him in that first debate. The following debates, I mean, if they're even going to be following debates, I, it, Joe Biden can't keep up if they spin this in a positive way. It's going to be really, really hard. Now, Biden did say that he tested negative, but, you know, Hope Hicks was also in a meeting with uh, fucking Nancy Pelosi. So Pelosi needs to get tested and figure that out. And if she's got it, they're not going to say shit. I mean, that's the thing is like they're going to downplay it so that, you know, nobody gets freaked out or anything about it. That's just the way that it's going to be. So I don't know what's going to be the outcome of this. uh, But there's some stuff we should probably prepare for. And, you know, there's there's a chance that Pence might win. If he goes up against Biden. I think there's a... It might not be as big as the the Trump-Biden. I think... I mean, I think Trump's... I I hate to say it, but... I do feel like Trump's going to win. If if he makes it out of this. And even before that, I feel like he was... uh, He was probably going to... Probably going to win. But, I mean, you know, if he comes out of this and and says, yeah, you know what, I think uh, people should should get, I think we should do a Medicare for all right now. And he has a total 180 about things. And then Nancy Pelosi goes up and because they're so anti-Trump and and the Trump derangement syndrome, they fucking did that in March when he was talking about a universal basic income, like he brought up a universal basic income and they were like, no, this is not the time to try that. And it's like, no, this is the exact time to fucking try it. So, I also saw that he was he was like taking a on trial vaccine, a vaccine that hasn't been tested or anything. And again, it's it's for a specific reason, right? Like if if that vaccine winds up working, even Fauci said he would he would skip trials, which is insane. If that vaccine works on him and he doesn't grow a tail or whatever, like He's going to use that as a way to push that. And again, a portion of the population will then support him. Because he's the one that got the vaccine out to the people. The implications of this are, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of implications to, to what's going to come. I, I don't, you know, and 
it's it's a little it's a little unnerving. But you know, my 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 thought is that I think he's. They probably moved him out of that hospital and and got him to a, a secure location because he probably isn't doing well. And the, and this is like a way to kind of control the narrative because it's all about controlling the narrative. And if and you know these politicians are like all about power. They're all power hungry kind of crazy pe- sociopathic people. Uh, remember when Hillary got sick and like CNN was like, "You can't talk about it." Like that's that's kind of the way that they're going to do it. Except they're going to kind of do it. A little bit more secretively. Uh, And I'm sure when he comes out. He will make statements about. How he was so strong with it. and Like his body's better now. And it's like no it's not. Dude your body's fucking trash. Like they they said that. If if you get COVID. um, Especially I think more recently. They discovered like if you get COVID. Then you like have permanent heart damage and like your lungs don't recover all the way like this thing does severe damage to your body if it hits you just it's and it's so it's it's hard to like I It's hard to make it, like, you can't say much more about it other than that because, like, man, you could, if you just wore the the mask and if, if you, if you took this a little bit more seriously, like, this wouldn't be a fucking issue, you know, but here we are, like, holy shit, you know, like. He, I mean, he did it to himself. He doesn't really care about the 200,000 people that have died in this country alone. This is like one of those weird things where you're like, yeah, this is karmic retribution. This is, it kind of feels like karmic retribution. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. But I will say I will say what I say all the time is regardless of the outcome the fight doesn't end here, right? We we there we still got to keep marching on the streets. We still got to keep pushing back. Um, I was watching the Amazon march to, uh, in LA uh, led by uh, Christian Smalls. Um, I, I was watching the the footage and, I, and actually Milo was watching it with me and, and once they said fuck Bezos he perked up and started paying attention to my screen and I was like, fuck yeah, I think I got a socialist cat. That's awesome. Uh, so, but you know, all these marches don't end when, regardless of what happens. Um, the fight and the struggle to, to reach a real level of equality doesn't end uh, if Joe Biden gets elected. Um, you know, we, we still have a lot of work to do and, and everybody has a role to play. You know, um, I think people understand revolutions to be, to be violent and to be, you know, burn the system down, total anarchy kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, fucking Mad Max level type shit. And that's just, that's not it. I mean, revolutions are literally like, Reading and and talking about things that you shouldn't be talking about is a revolution. Taking care of your neighbors, compassion is a revolution. Being open about being intellectual is a revolution. So, you know, I, I would I would push back on the idea of, of revolutions needing to be violent. Um, I think more and more people kind of looking at corporatism um, and American imperialism um, and, and looking at the people that represent that and, and not supporting those people, uh, that shows that there's a revolution. It does not have to be violent. 
In fact, the only people that do get violent in, the, in terms of these peaceful revolutions that do show up is the state. And I, I have, honest to God, have liberals, when I start talking about the labor movement, especially the labor movement, because the labor movement is great about organizing and strikes and peaceful marches and this, that, and the third. Like, they did a lot of peaceful demonstrations. And I have a bunch of people that are like, yeah, well, those revolutions turn violent. Yeah, but why do they turn violent? They turn violent because of the state. The state sent the National Guard and the military out, and, and they literally go, well, maybe if they weren't marching, the state wouldn't have to do that. And it's like, are you really just fucking, are you, you just backed up an authoritarian? I have have fucking liberals that say that shit to me. Because they're so indoctrinated with this neoliberal bullshit. But we're seeing that change. We're, I mean, this is the rise of a new labor movement. This is the rise of a new civil rights movement. And if they both uh, can coexist... And I think what Christian Smalls is doing, by the way... um, does show that it does show that uh, the Black Lives Matter movement the climate change movement and the labor movement and all these other things can coalesce and and be supportive of each other and fight for each other um, and create this large larger movement which gets us one step closer to a massive like nationwide general strike which I think could could happen but it won't happen if we get complacent those leaf blower dads and those uh, uh, the wall of moms from the burbs all have to fucking show up. You got to have more people talking about this shit. You got to have more people talking about Julian Assange. You got to have more people talking about income inequality and how Jeff Bezos also doesn't pay his taxes. Tim Cook and Bill Gates and all these other fucking rich billionaires don't pay their taxes. Not just Donald Trump. The news has to go beyond Donald Trump's Twitter. And look, I don't know if he's tweeting or not. Like I said, I don't pay attention to the dude's Twitter. But uh, if if that is true, like my joke might come, <laughs> my joke might come come around full circle. Uh, and I would fucking love that. I'd love it if people stopped paying attention to his Twitter and started paying attention to like real, what real journalism is and looked up the gray zone and what Lee Camp is doing and what Eleanor Goldfield has put out, the mid-press news, the intercept, like all of these other better outlets. I would love that. That'd be great. And maybe in those two weeks we can clear our fucking heads. Maybe. But we'll see what's coming down the pipe. Um, I'm going to try my best to keep keep a, a close eye on all this. Uh, and, you know, the story is going to keep changing every day. And, you know, so I will uh, I will do my best. Uh, all right. I think we're going to wrap this thing up. Uh, like I mentioned at the top of the top of the uh, episode here is there's no show on Friday. Uh, but if you want tickets, they are available. Six, the 16th is going to be a Halloween special and the 23rd is going to be my birthday special. So, um, yeah, so, so, so keep an eye out, out for those. And um, what else? Yeah, go to my website for tickets, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Um, you can do a bunch of stuff on my website. Uh, it is going, to, uh, going through a little bit of an overhaul, but uh, you can make donations. You can purchase my albums. You can uh, watch past episodes of Forkful of Noodles, Taboo Table Talk, this sh- the Road Reflections, this show. And uh, you can become a sustaining member directly on my website. That's a huge way to, to help financially right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, if, if you can, everything starts. You know, there's, there's uh, ways to make custom donations. There's ways to make uh, small donations, large donations if you have the, uh, the income to do so. Um, but you know, the big thing is just share this stuff out, make sure people, um, people hear about it because they, they do, they do a pretty good job of fucking censoring things that, uh, uh, talk about, you know, real issues instead of the fucking pop culture, what a Trump tweet kind of shit. So, um, yeah, hope, hope you guys, uh, hope you guys are doing well. I'll, I'll probably release a couple more of these this week. Um, and 
we'll go from there. We'll go from there. Uh, thank you guys very much. And we'll see you soon. Bye.